Okay. We're recording a podcast now. I don't believe you. Yeah, I also don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Now, now my windows are strangely arranged. All right. Welcome Jesus. to Welcome to Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with with slides. Uh, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who is talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. Uh, I am Alice Colvokali. I'm the person who is talking now. My pronouns are she and her. It is past midnight. I got up at five in the morning. I am exhausted. Well, if it makes you feel better, yay, Liam. Uh, my name is Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he, him. It really does. I just took a fatty dump. <laughs> Very nice. That makes me feel worse again. So you perfectly cancelled it out. Thank you, okay, Liam. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, guest, go. Yes, right. we have a guest. And I'm Alfred, dialing in from California. And any pronouns work for me. Hell yeah. What are we here to talk about? Ross, we're, Jesus Christ. We're here. We're here to talk about something I haven't been able to get out of my head for four days now. I've been the cube. The cube. Oh, the student housing cube. <laughs> Munger mm. Hall. <laughs> Live in the pod, eat the bug, etc. Yes. Yep. Um oh, this fuck. this is this is a story I think that was too good for any for us to pass up just doing a rare, timely episode. Yeah, um, it wouldn't fit in like oh, a news segment. Yeah. Oh, why aren't you guys doing actual disasters? When are you guys gonna do the Cologne <laughs> Archives class? We'll do, we'll do, we'll do <laughs> a big juicy <laughs> and death heavy disaster for you next up. time. All right, we'll, that's my PN to you: is we will do something grisly in the next episode. Yes, many fatalities, yes. you sick on, bastards. On my <laughs> word of honor, as a British officer, you will get. Some some dead bodies in the next Mi- one. Minimum one kill a death. You know, <laughs> one one thousand deaths. Yes, um, and we'll laugh at all of them, and they'll all be children. Yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> yeah, they're actually doubly funny because they're children. <laughs> it was fucked up that so that guy blew up a clown school. Oh boy, for, for kids. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk about an orphanage collapsing, and we're all gonna laugh at the at the dead babies. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'm in seventh grade again. Uh, real quick, before we get to the goddamn news, to the one person who gave us a one star review on Apple Podcasts and said, <laughs> "Her, her." My pronouns are master and god. Now uh, you have to check all the social justice warrior boxes. I am. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, I'm right. in rare form, baby. Let's the fucking do this. That hates you back. I want to. Uh, that hates you back. Well, I think we should start by doing the goddamn news. All right, nobody knows what the fuck this is yet. Uh, two two trains hit each other near Salisbury in England. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Do not uh, leak. Do not read the le- the leaks log. But, well, first of all, because it's wrong, right? Like we still basically don't know what happened, but. Uh, knowing what happened has been greatly hindered by the fact that several people who are like employed on these rail on these railways immediately uh, like leaked incident logs and control logs and like photos from the scene to Twitter and to train forums because rail fans are a plague. <laughs> um, and and so like a lot of information came out that now seems to have been wrong. All we really know is that this one train, the uh, the one five eight ran into the back of the 159. Uh, there was, like, the original theory that lasted for about an hour was that there was some, like, debris from the tunnel roof on the track that derailed the first train, and that took out the signaling, but now it seems that that's not the case after all. Um, thankfully, no one died, is the thing. Oh, yeah. um, the the driver of the rearmost train got pretty badly injured. That's but a like, yeah. at, least our, at least he's not dead. Yeah, and you like he, be pretty you badly run, injured. You run two diesel multiple units into each other in a tunnel, you know, and, and nothing catches fire. That's no pretty one good. Suffocates. I was about yeah, to say, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the interesting feature of this is that uh, British Transport Police are now investigating this uh, alongside the Rail Accident Investigation Board. The and train cops. The train cops, uh, specially trained trained detectives, and I want nothing more in my life than to be a train detective now. 
Uh, oh, I can't uh, wait for you to get canceled on Twitter again. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. Oh, I want to. I want to be a cop. Crowd booze, but only for train crimes. Crowd goes fucking nuts. See, I have this figured out now. I'm going to yeah, be uncancelable. I actually think you could be a train cop without much objection. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. As long but, as you're not, you know, kicking off homeless. Although, mm, yeah, don't rail surf. You will be, die. Be, be, be a train <laughs> detective. <laughs> yeah, but like. It is unusual for British Transport Police to investigate things like this and to like announce that they're investigating this so quickly, and it does raise the tantalizing, horrifying Sabotage, suspicion baby. of train crimes. We're in the train crime zone, it's train <laughs> crimes. Well, yeah, we have ascertained that the train uh, suffered a loss of contact uh, with tactical <laughs> tracks at approximately, <laughs> oh, 100 hours. Uh, <laughs> Especially heinous. <laughs> so yeah, we don't know what happened. Anyway, don't read the logs. Don't don't read the logs. Don't don't fucking speculate. We haven't been much. Uh, I will. No, no, yeah, I'm right. sure you Reddit will solve this crime. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. Reddit, we caught yeah. the Boston bombers. I click. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My mouse is not behaving. All right. Oh, so I thought, naughty mouse. So this is this is this is why we're here. The cube. We the, must pay homage to the cube. Yeah. We love you, the cube. We live in the cube. It's it's sort of like the the opposite of the whole break up the mass thing that architects like to do. No, this right. baby is all yeah. mass. This is like me on a cheat day, baby. <laughs> they didn't put in those little notches. That's true. That's true. It is a. It's slightly notched. No, I have to say, I, I've always wondered if they had actually came out with a. Brutalist or Cyberpunk Cube, what the reaction would be like. Oh, gonna, we put like game and icing on the cube? Oh, yeah. 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 RGB, if, if baby. If we're going to build a cube, don't make it look like a DC office block. <laughs> that, that's mm. kind of what it looks like, yeah. So, all right. For those of you who are listening just on audio, of course, what we're talking about is University of California Santa Barbara's new mega dorm, Munger Hall, right? <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. Misnamed because it actually hungers for your flesh and blood. It does. <laughs> no. Named for Charlie Munger, which is an incredible name. Hideous name. Sorry, now, Charlie. Ch Charlie Munger was Chuck like. Chuck Munger. Chuck Munger. The Chuck Munger. <laughs> the Chuck <was> Munger. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who sells you your Chuck. Um, he, he was uh, Warren Buffett's number two at Berkshire Hathaway. So he's a hedge fund guy. Um, and he donated a shit ton of money to UCSB on the condition. It's great, right? Like, this is a return to form for weird, eccentric, rich weirdos, right? Because, like, <laughs> you don't see a lot of eccentricity these days. And now you have this guy going, okay, yeah, I'll give you some money, but there's a Brewster's Million style uh, condition here. And the condition is. I get to design the dorm, and you have to follow the drawings to the fucking letter. The, the inheritance is yours if you just spend one night in my cube. <laughs> in my haunted dorm! <laughs> Belong to the cube. Absorb the cube. We love you, cube. Did they do this at another school? I read that he yeah, did this in Michigan. At the Michigan. Michigan. There's, there's right, a similar actually, one in Michigan. Orders, there's one in California also. This is to be the third one. Jesus, but this guy's a real fucking, but real fucking lunatic. Literally takes it to a new level. Prolific constructor of cubes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the 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 main feature of this, and we'll look at some floor plans later, um, is that of the 4,500 dorm rooms in here. Uh, ninety four, ninety five percent of them have no windows. Good. Oh, actually, all <laughs> outside. You're in California. What do you care? Don't have windows. The windows you see are only to the common space. Oh, I Why? thought some of the ones on the side had them. No, Why does the college not. resemble the prison? <laughs> Settle down, Foucault. <laughs> no. Uh, also, the other thing about Charlie Munger is that. He's 97 years old. Oh, God. And half blind. And half blind. <laughs> Logan's yes. run had a point. <laughs> <laughs> I told that to my dad the other day and I stand by it. You know, I I always think it's a bit reductive in like discussions about climate and things of that nature to think of it as like a war against the young, like an act of contempt yeah. by boomers. But it is. But it is. But, but in this case, and, and yeah, undeniable. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, they have a point, really. 
but yeah, the, the idea is that since there's no there's no uh, windows in your tiny dorm room, um, p- uh, the kids will be more encouraged to go out and collaborate and interact with each other in the common areas. Um, you know, yeah, uh, big big cubular version of those coffee shops that are like uh, no Wi-Fi uh, talk to each oh, other. Yeah, exactly. God, I hate those fucking people. <laughs> Leave me alone. Why do I have to? I don't like why. Why stop fucking well, for, like, forcing what, it down what my if, throat? What if, what if you lived in that coffee shop? I don't want to live in that coffee the, shop. The, the, the guy who runs it is ninety seven years old and half blind apparently. And half blind. It's like my dad fucking designed this dude. And there's no windows. <laughs> and I love my dad, but I would not trust him to design a building. So I thought I thought we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about the building later, but I thought maybe we'd look at some of the maybe some of the 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 the, the philosophical underpinnings mm. of uh, someone who'd try and we're, design we're gonna, something like this. We're gonna holistically interrogate this building. Yes. In order to understand Munger Hall, you have to understand the society that produced it. So open your your copies of Capital to page one. Yes. Well, I think a good place to start is asking, what is light and air, and why is it good to have in a building? (laughs) Where did you get this diagram of me? (laughs) (laughs) So, um... um, No, I'm just, I'm not going to fill that. You're you're not not going to fill that air? Okay. No, no. Well, that that is air. Air is not necessary on a podcast. Dead air, that's usually bad. So, Ugh. yeah, Windows. They were invented. Windows because, good. You know, Windows. Yeah, Windows. Windows. They're like they're like a hole in, yeah. in in your wall. But, it's a uh, hole in a wall where the light comes in. You can look out of it, uh, and sometimes people look in your window. But that's weird. Don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. um. And things like air can come in and out of windows. Awesome. Yes. Mm. You, you you obtain some kind of like vitamin D from your windows, probably, unless yeah. you live in Scotland, which I do, and then you don't. Oh, and, and no, genuinely, I got a mass text from my GP going, uh, like, "Hey, by the way, you don't get enough vitamin D from sunlight in winter in Scotland uh, to be healthy. You need to take uh, vitamin supplements because there is not enough sunlight for you." Damn, amazing, amazing. Wow. Now, that's so, usually not an issue here in California. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you live on God's at your sketch, so. <laughs> so, so yeah, a light and air is, like, important to have in buildings. There have been lots of attempts at, like, trying to sort of skirt around that fact, right? Um, mm. You know, starting right. as yeah. far back as, like, New York City tenements, right? I don't um, want to be cask of Amontillado'd. <laughs> I, I read that story and I didn't like what happened. <laughs> and that's the other. That's the other. Um, that's the other way to interpret what the cube dorm is. Mm. We we'll <laughs> yeah. just wall the students up in there. Yeah. We make them fight, and whoever whoever <laughs> wins and lives gets free one year, one year tuition, <laughs> not four years. <laughs> this is this is not the bank of mom and dad. Hmm. I, I, I love I love a tenement. Glasgow has a lot of these too, and you can tell a tenement conversion because th- they used to be like you know one room is one unit, right? Like it sleeps yeah. a family or two, right? Uh, and and they've had to like uh, you know divide those up into apartments. And so what they've done is they've just sort of chopped off a bit of the hallway too. And the consequence of this is that you end up with a real a, like a corridor shaped bathroom, and it's the most fucked thing in the world. Don't like that. <laughs> Just a really long, thin bathroom. Don't like that. How does that even work? Is the where do you poop? Is, is the toilet? Yeah, oh, if you want, or... if you want to poop, you have to walk all the way, like squeeze past the bathtub or the shower or whatever, <laughs> and then get into the, the like at the end of the room there. Wow. So, so like some of the earliest New York City tenements, right? They're basically rectangles, right? right? So, what you're seeing in the picture here is actually. A later version called the old law tenement. So before that, there were no laws, and there were no windows on the inside. And no laws, no rules. <laughs> ANCAP paradise. Yes. Oh, I met a real ANCAP in the wild at my last job, and she was fucking fascinating, man. It was horrible. <laughs> I was like, you people are real? <laughs> like, holy shit! <laughs> I feel like you should be in a museum. Yeah. So anyway, the old law tenements, they came out because... Remember, this is back before, 
indoor plumbing really was a thing before mm -hmm. air conditioning was a right. thing. And so the law said every room must have a window. And of course, they still wanted to build the largest building possible. And so all the windows on the side face into these little courtyards, as you see here. And mm. you put a bunch of them together, they look like a bunch of dumbbells. And so they're sometimes called the dumbbell apartment. And this 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 little courtyard here, because I know European buildings have these too, and they call it like a court of light, which I find delightful. Um, th this shit does not work at all. It no, just immediately that, turns why, into like a, a vent, right? Right. A couple decades later, New York banned this type of building, and now they've, they've passed what's called a new law. And the new law tenements are a U-shaped building that looks more like a regular apartment building. So you have mm. courtyards that are actually 20 or 30 feet apart. Yeah, you have to have a window that looks out onto something instead of like a, a big sort of a de facto chimney full of rotten and garbage. Yeah, yeah, a mountain of garbage. You, 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 the garbage you, is up you, to the second floor. Yeah, you right. just and, 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 you New know, York that, now, dude. That's basically one of the reasons that this dumbbell tenement was a failure was because people would throw trash into the courtyard because... New York doesn't it's have convenient. garbage cans. Yeah, yeah. In fact, they still don't have garbage cans, which is kind of amazing. This is true. <laughs> so greatest we, we, city in the world. Yeah. Well, we've improved Love a bit. Love to Mets, baby. On on <laughs> trying to get light and air into buildings since then, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, this fucks. I like well, this yeah. actually. I like this. Yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah. So what you're looking at here is uh, one of the most common floor plans in. Hong Kong public housing called the New Harmony Type 1. And this is your standard modern design philosophy that came out of the second half of the 20th century. It's all about light and air. So you've got these tall buildings, space them apart from each other. So everybody has fresh air and has windows in all the rooms. And especially if you've ever had Asian cooking, you'll know why you need the ventilation for rooms like the kitchen to oh, yeah. get all the grease out of your building. So for a long time, this was the direction that architecture was headed in. Taller buildings, mm -hmm. more light, more air, great views. But why, would you that? why would you do that, though? You could live in the cube. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the pro the problem with this is it's socialism because all of these buildings oh, look alike, and that means that it's socialism. And socialism is when you live in a big building and that it looks uh, like other buildings. Yeah. yeah, that looks like that. Maybe the outside is like in a pastel color. That's socialism. <laughs> yes. yes. Maybe it, it, there's just a big mural of Stalin here for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. But meanwhile, here we are in 21st century California. And we've got great weather here, great views, and we're back to building tenement-style buildings with little tiny courtyards. Of course. Hell uh, yes. Good idea. Like every one of these buildings you see here was built in the last five to ten years. Oh, wow. And well, like, at least, at least they're more earthquake-safe than building a giant uh, tower, right? Right. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> okay. These are all. These are all like uh, you know. These are your standard like small double loaded corridor building. That means you only get windows on one side of your apartment. Oh, Lots that of rooms sucks. may right. not have windows. If you're on one of the apartments on the side, you're facing into the three foot courtyard. Hmm. Which is possibly buildings... now not full of trash, but still right. But in fact, these buildings today actually cover more of a lot than the New York apartments of the 19th century. Progress. So we've, we've gone <laughs> backwards. <laughs> uh... How do we get there? Well, typically when you look at a building, there's this thing called floor area ratio, which is how big the building is relative to the piece of land. Yeah, the building's body mass index. Oh, yes. the poor building. <laughs> the, bo the building st stood on the Wii Fit a little too long, too. We've, we've all been there. Uh, right. So if you have a certain amount of building you're trying to fit on a lot, you can either fill up the whole lot with a low building, or you can go taller and leave part of the lot open. Unless you're in California, where 
we love our height limits. And so. Oh, my view. <laughs> oh, density. Yeah. The, the poor people are ruining my somehow $1.9 million condo. What if it falls down in an earthquake? Good. I hope some, it does. Some people are traumatized when they see buildings. Yes. You know? <laughs> you're, 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 you're erasing the trauma of someone who had to look at a building once. You know, you know, I, I feel like I, I've actually heard that comment at a city council meeting before. <laughs> So this this picture shows what a four point oh floor area ratio. So you can see how so you're allowed to build the same amount of you're four times the amount of square footage of the lot, right? Right. That's pretty common in a lot of downtown areas in the U.S. today. Hmm. 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 But we're hmm. seeing more of the hmm. we're seeing more of the low squished in buildings, partly because of the our country's obsession with height limits, but also because we build a lot of buildings out of wood, which has limits to how tall you can get. Right. I don't think it does. <laughs> give, give me the 50 story oriented big strand ass, boards. Yeah, big yeah. ass wooden skyscraper. <laughs> yeah. To make it happen. So Yo, don't, uh, don't talk uh, too loud. Uh, University of Realty is going to hear you coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, meanwhile, what's New York done since then? So, New York has actually continued with trying to give people more light and air. And their high density district, they allow these taller buildings. And so you've got a hallway, you've got apartments on each side, and you got windows on everybody's rooms. Now imagine if you cut that building into four pieces and you put them side by side next to each other. And that's ah. how you get the key. Ah, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that's, uh, you just that's... have to like look through the window that like goes through four other people's apartments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey Johnson! Oh, hey Stephen! Here in a here in a hall of mirrors. <laughs> yeah, here in the palace of Versailles. It's called a terminating vista. Using you my can method. have it out of your apartment. Well, I mean, sometimes you're lucky to have a a, a window in your apartment at all, even in like a. And a you new should build be grateful. Building. <laughs> mm. Also, look at the fucking footprint of the cube. It's monstrous. Yeah, <laughs> you could build something way less. I don't know, horrifying for the same for the same like. Or if you uh, just spaced out each of the yeah sections, you would have towers in the park, baby. Yeah, would, that, that, that would be socialism. That would be yeah. socialism. Towers in the park isn't so. Oh, you see those red costs? That is not socialism. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's there's been some like attempts at like building you know sort of windowless window light buildings yeah, right the NSA you know? uses them <laughs> well I think the NSA yeah the um the what's it I remember there was something in Washington D.C. a while back where they were trying to get a variant so they could build a a building full of you know micro unit apartments mm -hmm. and they would have for the uh, NSA yeah and they would have skylights instead of you know, windows? normal windows. So it's a prison. Oh, so it's literally sucks. how. Uh, Man, what if you're not on the top floor? <laughs> that's <laughs> how ADX Super Mill is. Yeah. Super Max is built, right? So you yeah. don't know where you are in the building, right? I'm not mistaken in saying that. That's literally how Super Max was built. No, that's definitely <laughs> that. That's that's like a thing that like you, you see the guards up on a gantry above you. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> But there have been, there have also been some, uh, I think, uh, some weird attempts at building completely windowless buildings um, for people to work why? in, right? Well, yeah, I'm going to again ask the question, why? Well, I guess because because Oral Roberts, that's why. Oh yeah, all right, that answers <laughs> my question. You don't <laughs> get paid to look out of a window, and the sixty Focus foot Jesus, your work. the sixty foot Jesus might get mad at you, or five hundred, yeah. six hundred foot Jesus. So this was the this was the abundant life building, which is the headquarters for the Oral Roberts Ministry. Oh, uh, it was mm -hmm. built nineteen fifty eight. Looks like a brutalist pineapple. Oh yeah, it does look like brutalist pineapple. Dude was a real fucking weirdo. Oh, that guy was a weirdo. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but the idea was they were going to save money on heating and cooling by having no windows in the building. All right. This is an office building <laughs> underneath the skin there. Didn't you say abundant <laughs> blessings or something? It's abundant, the abundant life. life. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't feel like abundant life to me. <laughs> I know I'm not Christian or whatever, but I gotta tell you, 
I do not feel abundantly alive being, looking at this being fucking thing. ushered into the pharaoh's tomb, yeah, and they're like, that's... "You're like, what do you what do you call this? Oh, it's the abundant life pyramid. This is where you yeah. live now. <laughs> make, uh, make, fun, make friends with the rats. You will, baby. You, you will serve Oral Roberts in the Sea of Reeds. Yeah, I remember calling these types of buildings vertical basements. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, is your basement any or an outie? I don't like that. I don't like that question. <laughs> Alice, you want to hear something gross? Yes. Your belly button is just your old mouth. Cool. That's true. <laughs> so this this was one of the uh, the first attempts at building a completely windowless building. Um, at least well, one of the first modern attempts. Um, you know where 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 there was like a conscious part of the design, and uh, yeah, uh, workers hated it. Uh, no one liked to go in there. Uh, it's been abandoned since 1980. They can't find a uh, tenant for it, right? Even oh, though it's I've... mostly a good building. Um, Spooky <laughs> abandoned concrete tomb. Fantastic. Yeah. I can't believe they can't find a buyer. Incredible. Um, I think we can conclude from that, though, that light and air is good in a building. Yeah, well, the thing <laughs> is, right, like, we never actually talked about what makes light and air good, which is that they make people less sad. Yes. <laughs> Like, people, for some reason, uh, our little monkey brains get sad when we don't have uh, natural light and uh, some kind of ventilation. Yes. We also get yeah. significantly dumber if we don't get uh, good ventilation. I have uh, worked in buildings with very few windows, and they were certainly the times where I was the most unhappy. Ross, you remember when I worked in King of Prussia and I was the most miserable son of a bitch alive? All right, yeah. <laughs> and then there was um, uh, Drexel University has all those underground classrooms. Those oh, are yeah. unpleasant. Those oh, those are awful. <laughs> oh, dude. I've yeah. I've been in some underground classrooms in my day too. And yeah, no, the the you, you really classrooms. do feel like you're being entombed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially at Drexel because the buildings are all old and creaky and hideous. Oh, I was thinking when the, the one w worse when the basement has multiple levels. Like you're in a yes. sub basement. Yep. That shit's worse. Yep. Yeah, Drexel's, uh, they call it the garden level classrooms, right? Yes, they did. <laughs> and it was, on, it was on the fourth sub basement of the old print shop <laughs> of um, the Evening and Sunday Bulletin building, um, right? So you were, you, you were four stories down in a building which even above ground was windowless. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> if, if anyone is ever <laughs> curious beyond the, uh, we want you to do material analysis of the conditions that cause these disasters. It's don't fucking go to Drexel University. <laughs> yes, hey, you don't know, do that. At, at, at Berkeley, they built one of those types of buildings recently also, where it's four stories above ground and about five below ground. And right. the reason was they wanted, they had about nine stories of stuff, but they had a five-story height limit, so... <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> Just it, it's they, 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 they didn't, didn't want to build a nine-story building. They didn't want to make the neighbors uphill angry that they blocked their view and so instead everybody who goes to school in that building has no view whatsoever <laughs> oh no my views of the homeless people they're being interfered with <laughs> go golden bears so i thought uh, an another fun thing to sort of discuss is this idea that we're going to use architecture to get people to collaborate right or to oh, like um, sort of alter their behavior you know and and this is this is something a lot of universities i think have really tried to put into action um, oh, for sure. They're like collaborative living spaces. You remember the Fisbees at Drexel? Uh, I don't know what those were. Oh, the like, if you shared a major, you could live in like CS housing. Oh, I don't like that. No, but like, that's sort of what I like. You can do it that way, or you can do it whatever the hell way this is, I guess. <laughs> well, the fuck is that? So, you know, th 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 there's this idea you, you, you try and um build a building that fosters collaboration this was sort of um uh i, I think uh based on a, something called building 20 at mit right mm. uh, building 20 was notorious because it was it was basically where they shoved everyone who was working on something weird into this one temporary building uh built uh during world war ii right um you know and and, and everyone was everyone in this building because uh, they had so much freedom to work, they could just do whatever the hell they wanted. You know, the whole field of linguistics was developed in here. Noam Chomsky just sort of came up with it while he was put in an office, put away Huge from everyone mistake. else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Understanding each other is uh, bring back the Tower of Babel. Is what I'm saying. 
but it was like, you know, this was a, this was a piece of shit building, right? Um, all made of wood and asbestos. And they just put a bunch of MIT kids in there. And, you know, they came up with all kinds of stuff, right? And <laughs> universities have tried to replicate that success um, and not done a great job at it, right? Hmm. Because so, it's the people, not the building. It's, it's, yeah. Right. But it's also, they try and, um, a lot of times they try to sort of facilitate this by um, removing privacy, right? Right. Yeah, so cool. good example. This is the Richards Medical Research Labs at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, Luke Kahn designed this one. Uh, and um, one of the things he wound up doing was, uh, you know, try to make all the lab spaces sort of open single units, you know, everyone would be doing their research together, I guess, right? Um, and the researchers all hated it and put partitions in immediately. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's that, awesome. that reminds me how in the town I grew up in, one of the elementary schools was built in the 70s when open plan schools were the hot fad. <laughs> and it was a disaster, as you can imagine. I remember hearing about how they finally put in walls and it was the biggest thing in town. <laughs> mm. Yeah, having yeah. W worked and uh, gone, well, yeah, having gone to school in an, uh, in an open plan and having worked in several, I can tell you, just the, the whole big brother is watching you is not super good for morale, shockingly enough. Yeah, and open open plan offices are, I think, getting popular, or they have been popular because they're cheaper to build. Well, it's the same thing um, with restaurants, man. Every <laughs> fucking restaurant you go to now, you can't fucking hear yourself think. You cannot have a conversation in them. Yeah. Listen, it's not it's not being distracted. It's collaboration. <laughs> You're collaborating yeah, collaborate. with it. Unless, unless, listen, unless it's one of those weird erotic sushi bars where I eat the sushi off the naked person, I, mm -hmm. no, man, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm not crazy. You're crazy. That's why. Yeah, I was, listen, you, no, you're no, all collaborating on eating this barbecue shrimp. <laughs> yeah, and so that's why with these open offices now, you've seen the phone booth somehow make a reappearance inside office building. Oh, yeah. And the weird nap pods. Yeah, because people crave the tiniest bit of privacy, but like... Uh, Funny how that works. Uh huh. Uh huh. But we can't give you an office. So what we can do is you can you can book a ten minute slot in the cube, which is soundproof, so you can <laughs> say the word in that. I have a larger. I have a smaller cube inside the cube I live in. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus cube. Which actually, that's where we go from here. Is we look at the cube properly, see how these ideas have been applied in yeah, order to torture uh, teenagers. Set out our table stakes here of air and light and various of cubes. Yes. So uh, who wants to see the floor plan? Ooh, Me, yeah. I guess. Here we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's so to a floor plan. give you an plan. idea of how big this floor plan is, it's about 400 feet long and over 300 wide, so it's about the size of maybe two blocks. Prison architect. Well, usually when you build a prison, you need to provide windows in the cells. Shit, that's literally true, isn't it? It's <laughs> yeah. worse than prison. Yeah. I would say it's more like a, what do they call it, an animal feedlot? Or mm, kind yeah. of concentrated animal education operation. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm a battery engineering student. All right, so you got, you know, you got a, you got a main corridor, your main double loaded corridor. It's got two banks of elevators here in the middle. Um, and then off of it's divided into eight houses per floor, right? Uh, yeah. That's those are like these. That's a whole house right there. And that's further subdivided into eight sort of pods. <laughs> pods. If, if, I don't if know. they're houses, why can't they be separate buildings? Oh. That would make too much sense. And then, and then each of those eight pods, units, whatever you call it, is subdivided into eight single occupancy rooms around a central corridor with uh, a bathroom. Wait, so you don't even have a roommate? No, you're just you going insane, climbing the walls in your yeah. windowless, solitary <laughs> dorm? Yeah, yes. we already have a word for this, it's Supermax. <laughs> 
No, Supermax gives you a window. This is what's a skylight, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Point stands, I think. Yes. And the whole building has two regular exits. I assume it has more emergency exits at these exterior st- stairwells. Yeah, it's got, looks like 10 emergency exits. So we're, we're at least good on that. <laughs> Right, yeah. Assuming, assuming you, assuming the power hasn't gone out in the building, and you can make it out of your, you know, windowless tiny room down your windowless tiny corridor to the windowless tiny stair, you're fine. Genuinely, uh, if you, if if you wanted this experience, but with more fucking human contact, you could join the navy. Like uh, this is an this is an <laughs> aircraft carrier, is what this is. At least you get to see Harriers and shit. Yeah, you're like yeah. navigating by bulkheads. It's insane. So at the end of each house, right, there's the common area, right? Right. And it has a kitchen. It has some tables. Yep. It has, I think, a ping pong table. I think. That's nice, I guess. Yeah, and that's where you go if you want to not go crazy from isolation and instead go crazy by forced socialization. Oh, it's um, even worse. Yeah. <laughs> How many games of ping pong do you think you could play before you went insane? Uh, you and 63 of your best friends that you never met. Less than 10. <laughs> I am not very good at ping pong. <laughs> How are you supposed to, like, oh, man, you can't have any meaningful, I guess, no, nah, that's, I, I don't even know. I'm just very angry. Like, <laughs> what, if, what if, what if, what if you are, like, uh, in up in house two here, and y- your friends are in like house seven. How the fuck do you work that? Do you have to like commute over there? Yeah, I mean they probably yeah. have to give you like a little golf cart to go from one mm-hmm. end of the building to the other. <laughs> and you'll be riding those electric scooters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you now that you mentioned that, why don't we skip up to the roof <laughs> of this building? Oh, you yeah, actually we- got the first floor oh, first, yeah, it looks yeah, like. First floor. So, so one of the rooms that actually gets windows is the surfboard storage room. This is oh true. My God. Why? They are what? building this this completely windowless building right next to the beach. Um <laughs> Dude, come, <laughs> I just I love how much how it just says just 570 surfboards. Yes. That's like that's like one of those in rem lawsuits where it's like United States yeah, versus uh, you know a uh, uh, a Plymouth or whatever. Like United States versus 570 surfboards partially waxed. So you, you got an entry hall, right? And this is the same corridor as before. You can see there's interior multi-purpose study rooms, so you're not, you're not going to see anything while you're studying. That'll distract you, right? Yeah, uh, um, I think I'd probably lose my... Man, I would not have survived in the storm. I'll tell you that right now. There's big the ad- mail room has windows. The mail Why? room does have windows. The, 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 the like food prep area has windows. Uh, the fire water tank and fire pump room has windows. The pets have a window. Uh, two giant mechanical rooms have windows, <laughs> but the study rooms don't have a window. That's no. genius. What I think is interesting is they have some apartments on the exterior, I guess. Oh yeah, those are for the staff, because I guess they realized they couldn't find anybody who would be willing to work there and live. Oh, they didn't get a window? (laughs) No, they'll do it, yeah. (laughs) I thought it might be for, like, disabled students or something. No, fuck them too. (laughs) It's ADA compliant in that it encourages all students to commit suicide by the end of the second (laughs) semester. (laughs) Well, the fun one is, it also has a roof deck. Let's see that roof. Yes. Oh. So, so you, you, you see they have like, um, they they have a multi-purpose classroom up there. This is like spilt like a town square sort of situation. Oh, like an outdoor mall. You got a gastro pub. You got got your, uh, you you got your counseling and psychotherapy, which you will be using. (laughs) Oh yeah, you sure will. (laughs) Seven of the spots available for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm curious about what recreation is. Uh, to, uh, is more ping pong tables? That looks like the only thing in there. Probably. I mean, the funny thing, of course, is that this is um, you know, this this is an inward facing courtyard on the roof. 
So no, you're not getting any of those beautiful views out there. Of course I think, not. I think it's got a glass ceiling as well. <laughs> oh my god. Je- uh, mm. Beautiful. I love to go to the gastro pub, which will presumably serve me various of bugs. I was about to say. Yeah, well, you're going to be there quite a bit because you're going to be uh, drinking to forget that you live demonstration kitchen. Suck my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Do they just? De- what are they demonstrating? I don't know. The most efficient way to slit your own wrist. Yeah, we're well, really heavy on the self harm jokes. Yeah. I'm remembering my time in college, and there was some self harm. So we could <laughs> stick a trigger warning on here at some point. So this was this was uh, Charles Bunger's uh, uh, artistically conceived perfect plan no, for wasn't. a student torture uh, chamber. Okay, there you um, go. <laughs> well, well, listen, listen. Okay, he may be a 97 year old uh, weirdo who like Gentleman devised architect. a way to torture students, but like at least he's giving them the money to do it, right? Like. Uh, uh, a, a little bit of it, yeah. Uh. Yeah. You know, this is the real punchline of this whole project. Is I genuinely for, never knew this! For all the silliness and all the absurdities of this design, it doesn't even save money. It, even if you take out the cost that's covered by the donation, it still costs more per bed than a standard dorm that the University of California system has been building dozens of in the last few years. But, but he's he's not even gonna pay for like e- even a plurality of it. No, no it's thir- the no, that's thirteen percent of the funding. Ordinary California that's, taxpayers like that's me. Fucked. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's so fucked. What? Why did they agree to this? <laughs> I, I, I wish you know, I knew. Yeah, I the, 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 the University of California system has a, a, a colossal set of endowments. Like that, they don't actually really need his money. But like, also, he, he's not giving them that much. Why? Why? Why take it? Oh, well, because uh, they want to. You know, they need to. Um, they need to assert their dominance over local building code officials, <laughs> right? I don't it's know. Well, one grab. rumor I've heard is that they're hoping to get more money out of him in the future. But even still, we're talking about a public cost of around three hundred thousand dollars per student <laughs> for this <laughs> for the cube. <laughs> so, I mean, and to give you to would, put that in oh, perspective, the regular dorms are maybe two thirds of that cost or less. <laughs> Just incredible. Wait, we have not. Have we gotten to the? We haven't gotten to the artificial windows bit. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Right. Next we'll get we're that. Look at just what kind of I just innovations want to, have happened in the building code that have allowed this thing to even get built in the first place. I don't yeah. want to do spoilers, but I want to read a direct quote from him about artificial windows that rely on LED lights. If you want it romantic and dim, you can make it romantic and dim. When in your life have you been able to change the sun? In this storm, you can. It's a pretty cheerful place, these little bedrooms. The idea for the virtual windows was inspired by the artificial windows in the cabins on Disney cruise ships, Mr. Munger said. Except mine are better. 97-year-old man loses the thread a bit. Logan yes. Tron had a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, one of the first comments that popped up everywhere when the cube was first the cube <laughs> made the rounds of the tweets was that oh this building's a huge fire hazard how are people going to get out normally think about how you know if you look at new york the buildings have fire escapes outside the windows and so on and you probably have heard of building codes that require bedrooms to have windows and hmm. that used to be true but the recent trend in fire protection has been around sprinklers. And to really encourage people to use sprinklers, the code has been written to allow all sorts of exceptions if you provide sprinklers. And one of those exceptions is having windows in a bedroom. Oh my god, that rules. Wow. So, so when the fire starts... Uh, the sprinkler immediately floods my room and I drown on the eighth floor. 
<laughs> Once again, like, your greatest hazard is drown. This is an aircraft carrier, again. Like, go join the fucking Navy if you want to live in this. Yeah, so oh. you can kind of see the history of fire protection philosophy. At first, after you have these big fires that burn down entire cities, it was all about how do we keep the fire from spreading? So you saw a switch from wood buildings to brick buildings. And then, of course, that didn't really solve all the problems. There were still people dying in huge numbers in hotel fires and things because even though the building didn't burn down, people couldn't get out of it in time. And so the second wave of fire protection philosophy was making sure that there are enclosed exits. That's where you can get the rule that buildings have to have two stairs. And also where bedrooms had to have windows, because that was your second exit out of your bedroom. Because most mm. bedrooms only have one door. And more recently, though, because stuff inside buildings has gotten more flammable, the design philosophy has changed again to putting out the fire before it becomes dangerous. And that's where the sprinklers come from. Hmm. But you hmm. kind of need like all of these things working at once, That's right? That's right. It's it's definitely a belt and suspenders approach where if one doesn't work, at least you got the other to fall back on. So that seems a little antithetical to uh yeah, you don't need a a window in this bedroom all if you it. have a sprinkler. <laughs> Do you follow me? That's yeah. like yeah. knocking <laughs> one of the like yeah. uh, sort of legs out from under this chair. It's like right. like uh, yeah. yeah. So one way to think about it today is you've got a few primary approaches to fire protection. You prevent the fire from happening in the first place by one thing we do now is that you have to have more electrical outlets on the walls every so many feet or so so that we aren't daisy chaining power cords. Uh, and then there are fireproof walls between apartments. You have smoke alarms everywhere. You got sprinkler system. You got doors or windows to get outside. And then you got fire department when it comes to fight fire. Mm. And so the idea is that, you know, even if one of these components isn't working perfectly, at least one of the other ones will kick in and hopefully keep the fire yeah. contained. So long as you don't, like, uh, remove them in favor of the one that failed. Right. Mm -hmm. But so far, the, the track record has been pretty good. The amount of people who die in buildings that have sprinklers is only a fraction relative to those. Oh yeah, sprinklers rule. Though. Yeah, and it, it seems well, like, you know, most, most fires these mm -hmm. days are in like single family houses, not in like apartment buildings. Right. I don't have any statistics to back that up, but it but sure it feels true, yeah. that way. The sprinklers, <laughs> they they're designed to contain the fire to the room that they started in, and for the most part, they do that. Yeah, unless you, you know, uh, had flammable cladding on the outside of the building or yeah, something. Yeah, right, right, yes. Uh, who would do that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who may not know how a sprinkler works, it's pretty simple. There's, uh, yeah, sprinkles. There are pipes <laughs> with water, and there's this little thing inside that melts or breaks when the temperature gets too high, and that lets the water out, which hits this metal thing at the top and sprinkles it out to cover the whole space. And I think you might actually be looking at an aircraft carrier or other ship on the picture on the right. It's some, oh, guy, yeah. some guy wearing Matrix sunglasses in an orange <laughs> jump <shoot. laughs> I mean, honestly, drip. Like... Yeah. Yeah, and how did sprinklers come about? They have been invented for a while, but they really only got big after the 1980s when there was a big hotel fire in Vegas in a building that was only partially sprinklered. And most of the people who died were in the parts that didn't have sprinklers. And so afterwards, the code was changed to really encourage sprinklers everywhere. Hmm. Like uh, one Meridian Plaza in Philly also had that issue. Yeah, they mm -hmm. thought the thing oh, was going to yeah, fall yeah, we over. Talked about that. Yeah, we yeah. did talk about that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Jesus. And yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's not why, good. And why have I I thought that modern shit was less flammable. No. <laughs> no. 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 It's all Everyone plastic. goes to a, IKEA and buys uh sawdust and glue. Um is, yeah. is, is it because we stopped putting asbestos in everything? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I, I think it's unequivocally yes. And the podcast right now. <laughs> yeah. Asbestos is good. Asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but what happened was they found that in the past it might take 10, 15 minutes before the room fire got out of control. Now it gets out of control in about three minutes, which means... Yeah, because we make everything out of oil. Right, which means yeah. there's not enough time for the fire department to get there, and so you got to have something to put out the fire on its own, and that's why sprinklers. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's good to know that when I'm trapped in my tiny, uh, tiny, tiny cube room that's on fire, I won't be, have to... Um, I won't have to deal with living for much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Just take you'll a be- couple of deep breaths to really right. speed right. it yeah. along. Yeah. <laughs> the point of the sprinklers yeah. is it protects everybody else in the building. Because if you're in that room and you don't get out, you're still screwed. But the idea is the fire is not going to spread to the next room and so on. Uh, yeah, you can see here where with modern buildings, they get out of control really fast. and so. Sprinklers are designed to go off within a minute or two of the fire starting. This definitely, uh, this definitely kind of reminds me of one of those military slides. I gotta say. Oh yeah, this <laughs> is some PowerPoint gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we know about fire. Yeah. We can. So now you know how they're able to get away with not having windows in the bedroom from the fire code. Like you. Hmm. And. So this Munger guy, he's built a couple other dorms, as before. In the one in Michigan, you've got the same eight-person pod with a hallway. He loves pods. He he's just big pods. on a pod, yeah. Common space that has the windows. But at Santa Barbara, they take it to the next level, where your pod doesn't have its own windows. But then you got eight pods. That are combined into a megapod, or I guess they call it a house, <laughs> yeah. trying to make it sound a little friendlier. And only when you go down this hundred foot long hallway to the big room at the end, do you have windows. Great. And they got like they got everything there. They got a communal kitchen, you know. So it's also stinky all the time, uh, and you have to look nice at other people's dirty wheel. dishes. Nice yeah. hamster wheel for you. Oh, that'd be fun. For an awesome stress. I mean, and it's eco friendly because you're helping to power it. If if you live in like one of the one of the buildings further down the corridor, you can get some good cardio in just going to breakfast at least. It's a good point. Yeah, you're you're. Oh, you, you have your own little kitchen in each pod, and then there's the big kitchen. Oh, uh, okay. Pod. So no matter what, someone's going to throw your cast iron pan in the dishwasher once or twice a month. (laughs) (laughs) You're just chasing it around the various dishwashers. One of the bigger issues is this type of layout is uh, who who cleans this place? (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Whose responsibility is it? (laughs) The student? The most annoyed person there. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is an it's, endurance test. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't see a single janitor closet in this entire house. That's a good point. That there there were some. There were some on the first floor. We we looked at them. There there is. Uh, there's a there's a couple. There's a couple of custodial rooms in there. There's like no privacy in this at all. Like you're maybe you're trying to soak in some sunlight through your meager window, and then people just walk in and out. Can't do anything. You know what's really funny? What the foot fr- the footprint of the custodial rooms about the same as the five hundred and seventy surfboards. Wow. <laughs> Priorities. No war but class war, baby. Are the surfboards provided, or, or is it just like you could store five hundred and seventy surfboards here if they brought five hundred and seventy surfboards? You know, I don't think they went into that detail, but it does. Bring the question of if the first 570 people bring surfboards, what do the other 3,900 people do? <laughs> you have to like, you, you have, have to like your hot pot. desk your surfboards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you have to. You're gonna have to. Uh, you're gonna have to shove it in your pod with you. You'll have to sleep on it. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, where did this whole idea came from? As you mentioned before, it came from cruise ships. <laughs> yeah, I love marine architecture. It's it's great, and it definitely doesn't make me incredibly depressed. Well, I gotta I gotta say, having been on on a, a cruise ferry with an interior cabin, uh, you know, for one night it's fine. Yeah, How about for, for a one whole semester. semester <laughs> yeah, for I, a whole semester, <laughs> and, and, it, and it started to get it started to get to both of us uh, after a while, and we weren't in the room all that long. And I remember mm. both of us being like, "Man, I wish we had a fucking window <laughs> yeah. to look at the black, lifeless sea." Munger just going like, "Okay, now how can we introduce pitch and roll to yeah, this?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> you know, California has this thing we call earthquakes. So. <laughs> to good point. Yeah. No, that's too unpredictable. You need like a constant roll. Put the whole building on hydraulics. You put it in a wave tank. Really lends a whole new meaning to a floating foundation. Ha. Ah. Ha ah ha. Thank you for that, yeah, Justin. And so, as, as this Munger guys built a couple other buildings, they've been around long enough to have some reviews, like this one. It was great. Uh, up until the COVID started, staying in an apartment with no windows and no access to other facilities within the building isn't worth it. Well, hopefully you won't live through a pandemic in Munger, so this may not apply to you. But the pandemic's still going and will still be going by the time they ever build this thing. Oh, yeah. And oh god! Imagine being fucking locked down in this. That is solitary confinement. <laughs> That's literally straight up solitary. Yeah. Like you are just in jail at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even go to the demonstration kitchen. I know, right? You go demonstrate in front of the demonstration kitchen. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> Let me in. Yeah. And so, about a hundred years ago, there was another big pandemic, and one of the architectural design ideas that came out of it was that people should be able to open their windows to get fresh air, especially in the winter months. And that's Yeah, why, get rid of the miasma. Yeah, yes. that, that's why you saw these old buildings that had radiators located right under the window. And the idea is that even though it's below zero outside, you leave your window open, the radiator is cranked up and running and brings in fresh air, heats it up and keeps you warm. But also Scottish alive. people still do this. <laughs> Scottish yeah. people still do this. And it makes me feel insane every time it's, you know, minus five outside and they have the windows open. I have to leave my windows open when the radiator's going in my apartment. It gets yeah. too hot otherwise. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> right. That's how they're designed. They're sized to be used with the window open. But obviously here, you yeah. can't do this, because no windows. Yes. Right, and so, this is actually the history, one of the interesting histories of mechanical ventilation, is they found that people would often leave the windows closed in their bathrooms in the winter, even though that was the only source of fresh air in the bathroom, and so you get all the mold and other gross stuff. And so the building code was changed to require mechanical ventilation in bathrooms, even if they did have a window. And so at that point, people started asking the question, well, if we've got fresh air coming to this bathroom through a fan, why do we need windows in the bathroom? Then? And you can start to hmm. see where that starts to go. Yeah, wh the why do we need slope. windows anywhere? <laughs> why can't we just make it all ducts? <laughs> so the way the building code worked in the U.S. was, up until the 90s, there were three building codes that were used in the three different parts of the country. There's the Uniform Building Code that was written in California. There was the National Building Code that was used in the Northeast and Midwest. And then there was the Standard Building Code that was used in the South. God, it's like boxing promotion. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> and heavyweight champion of the world, world heavyweight champion. Right. And of course, when you're running... Walter White is in here for some reason. <laughs> when, when you've got manufacturers and architects and developers and landlords operating buildings across the whole country, over a while they realized, you know, we should probably standardize this stuff. And so in the 90s, 
after a long process that spanned a couple of decades, they finally merged it together into what they called the International Building Code, which is mostly used in the countries of the United States and the United States. <laughs> it's the World <laughs> Series of Building Codes. Yes. However, uh, one way they made a compromise with everybody was that if you were able to build something using any of the three codes before, you will now be able to build it anywhere in the country. And there is some grumbling, of course. For example, the windowless rooms originated from the Midwest and the East, but it wasn't until maybe 10 years ago that California finally allowed this. But it, it's okay, though, because you can have fake windows. Mm-hmm. Fake <laughs> windows upset me so badly, yeah, me dude. Too. That's just pure fucking evil, man. It's just a, it's just a big LED screen, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's just a big screen that doesn't have as many cable connectors. <laughs> well, I think the ones they're installing in the uh, in the pods are actually just um, you know sort of a soft white light. They're not like they don't have like a fake window scene on them. Oh, you can't even change the fucking like fake view. <laughs> no. What? No, that, that's oh, decadence. That sucks so, it's, <laughs> so you just have you have a solitary cell with a mood lighting <laughs> thing yeah, in it. Yeah, yes. that, that's one of the yeah. issues. Is because these fake windows, they're actually kind of okay if all you're going for is a fake view, but they don't produce anywhere near the amount of light as a real or vitamin D, as you can see here. presumably. <laughs> mm. God, that uh, sucks oh, so yeah. bad, dude. <laughs> yeah, and to give you an idea of just how far apart from the real deal we're talking. Your standard light bulb over here puts out about a hundred lux of light. That's your standard indoor light. And overcast day is ten times that. So even if the sun's not out, even if it's cloudy or if there's wildfire smoke, which is about a quarter of a year over here in California, you still got about ten times as much light as you would from your standard indoor light bulb. Oh, we f- we fucked up and we accidentally gave students year round seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> right, and as you can <laughs> see here, they do make special lamps that are super bright for people who have seasonal affective disorder. But even those are only a fraction of the actual sun, and they don't make Just you warm. Stacking either. a shitload yeah. of them together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, well, that's that's how you get the. Uh, Daisy chain power strips <laughs> situation. <laughs> oh, I wonder how many outlets are in each one of the cubicles. My Not feeling enough. is that if they built to the code minimum, because the rooms are tiny, there will only be two of them. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> well, the thing about students is they don't have a lot of like uh, electrical devices. Oh, no, <laughs> mostly mostly like to write by like candlelight with a quill. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'd be a bad idea in a, in a, a, a tiny room, though. Tiny interior room. <laughs> you, you, you'll trigger the sprinklers and they'll um, drown you. <laughs> you, know, you know, that was the other issue. Back when I lived in a dorm with about 60 people in it, the fire alarm would go off a couple times every semester from somebody smoking in their room or somebody bumped into the smoke alarm, and then we all had to evacuate the building. And that's with 60 people. If you've got 4,500 people in a building, you're going to be doing that twice a week. <laughs> I was about to say, I, I wonder if they can like only have the smoke alarm in one section of the building. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, well, one section's going to be covered. That's fine. Those yeah. kids burn, they burn, man. We already got some of their tuition. You wind up with a, uh, you wind up with like a crushing uh, stampede uh, twice a month. Really thin out the student population. Yeah, <laughs> you've heard of weeding classes. Now get ready for weeding dorms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the University of California system has about ten different campuses, and all of them have a student housing crisis, and so they're all building lots of dorms. But everybody else has decided that windows are nice to have. 
and these these have all like come out cheaper per student, right? Yeah. With, with like more space. My God. Yeah, because one of the things is that these are very standard types of buildings. You show the contractor list and they say, oh, yeah, I built five of these before I know what to do. I know how to schedule it. You show them the plans for the cube and the guy's trying to figure out how am I going to get enough cement mixes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mobilized to do that foundation for. And all kinds of problems come up with something that's far larger than any building and probably 100 feet, 100 miles of Santa Barbara. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Charlie Munson, M- Munger, whatever his Munger. face is. Don't soil um, Josh. Uh, don't yeah. soil Josh's good name. Yeah, that's a good point. He will. He will soon have his cubes everywhere. We will all live in the cube and be happy. That's and right. Eat the bugs. Right. Eat the bugs. Yep. Eat, eat the bugs. bugs live eat in bug. Cube. Live in yeah, cube. The funny <laughs> thing is that the one school where their mascot is an ant eater, <laughs> their their dorms have plenty of wind. You see Irvine. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did we learn? Well, yeah. <laughs> let there be light unless you go to UCSB. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, my real thing is what do you think is going to happen to the cube? Are they actually going to build it? They're do you think they'll build it? Ahead with it? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I think they're going to build it. I mean, the architect resigned over it, or an architect. Not a soci- who was on the committee to approve this thing, or at least uh, solicit feedback. Gave us they all apparently hated it, and the school said, "Fuck you, we're doing it anyway." I love academia. Yeah, you know, I'm, my guess is it will end up like that office cube that we saw earlier. <laughs> Eventually, nobody wants to use it. Yeah, no. Well, this is what I think is going to happen. This is my official prediction. They're going to build it. They're going to use it for like five years and everyone's going to hate it and it's going to be a massive disaster and they're going to mothball the building and then they're going to leave it mothballed for two years and then a housing crisis really rears its ugly head again and then they'll reopen it and And to be fair they do have a housing crisis but this is not the way you solve it and after reopening it they will then give every student in their legionnaire's disease oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) Justin, I shouldn't have let you borrow this Lay's. <laughs> oh, but shit, I, guess just, I, I guess I trust you with I've it. I've just laid 4,500 cases of Legionnaire's disease. Oops. <laughs> Billy's this final podcast, sex board, baby. This podcast brought to you by Legionella. <laughs> That's Legionella. Ask your doctor if it's right for you. And the answer is probably it's not, no. It's not. It's losing your fingers. <laughs> with love from Philly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, praise be to the cube. Mm-hmm. Praise be to the cube. Live in a pod. Eat the I bugs. believe in one cube. <laughs> Live in the pod. Yeah. Eat the bugs. Give up your car. What <laughs> no. else? The other one. It take five hundred and seventy <laughs> surfboards to work. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather just live in the GTI, man. Those <laughs> seats go down full, far enough. I can manage it. Well, I think your car is bigger than the cube room. Mm. Has more windows, <laughs> more seating, and more horsepower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cube can't move at all except in an earthquake. I can move all the time. Needs a sprinkler system though. I, Has I'm, one. I'm There's excited. A, it's I'm just, excited a the just a bug. It's just a jar of dip spit I keep in the back Aww. for situations uh, just like fuck, this, dude. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> oh, well. Well, that was a podcast. We have a on this segment. podcast. We have a segment we like to call Safety Third. There's Safety Third. Yeah, I stole it from Shake them. hands for danger. Oh well, I'm tired. Okay. And I have to poop again. So let's wrap this up. All right, I'm oh. so fucking tired, dude. Hi. Well, there's your problem, crew and guest. Fuck you. I'm <laughs> a our big guest fan. Too. <laughs> I used to work in construction. The Sorry. company I worked for was building an eco-friendly house with SIPs, structural oh, SIPs. insulated panels. Uh, I love SIPs. They're so fucking quick to throw up. <laughs> and, uh, well, we're going to hear about them. Yeah. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with SIPs, imagine a big ice cream sandwich made of two layers of OSB-oriented strand board, right? Sandwiching a layer of styrofoam. 
They supposedly have a fire retardant in them, but oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a there's good a ass side, I, baby. I, there's a reason I thought of the story while listening to your episode on the station nightclub fire. They're super Jesus, high how efficiency. How long ago did they send this in? <laughs> Thank you, Anne Marie, okay. for digging through the archives. Yeah. They're super high efficiency, so they're used in green building. But if you want to cut a new window or door opening or make a wire chase, you have to use a hot knife that makes a ton of nasty black smoke and releases all the burned styrene into the atmosphere. Hooray for green building. So what do you do if you don't have a window to let that burn styrene into the atmosphere? <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just have the student cutting themselves a window in, in, in the... I'm in freaking the out of here, man! <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember what it was like on the outside. <laughs> Digging through the floor with a spoon. <laughs> they got nothing but time in here, Warden. You order sips from a factory who makes them to spec. They arrive at your build site in stacks on a flatbed. We had a bobcat with forks to offload them. Allegedly, someone at the factory told our foreman that they usually mount, move them around the lot at the factory without securing them to the forks. <laughs> they just have the lowest paid employee ride on top and hold the stack down by body weight. What could go wrong? <laughs> shake <laughs> hands with danger. Yeah. That's shaking all your limbs with danger. <laughs> shake leg with danger. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Fish shake. Love danger. Yeah, shake. <laughs> <laughs> At my build site, I was the lowest paid employee, so guess oh, what? The foreman told me to climb up on, on top of the stack of, SI, of, of SIPs while he picked them up with the forklift bobcat, because he loved to drive the bobcat. Who doesn't? Whom's among yeah. us? Oh, that's wholesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember thinking it seemed like a bad idea as he jostled me and the stack of SIPs off the truck. You, you can see, here, here's the bobcat. Here he is. Sitting on the sip. Whoa. I am. I got to say, a bobcat does not have the smoothest motions of any <laughs> no, kind no. of machine <laughs> out there. <laughs> From the ground to the flatbed is about four feet, plus the stack of sips was probably seven feet, plus some extra for clearance. So I'm pretty sure I was about 12 feet off the ground. I think, uh, it, it, not, not to be reductive here, but I think if you are going by OSHA rules, not only should you not be doing this, but if you are doing this, you should be wearing fall protection. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. actually need fall protection for this one, yeah. You probably already know that bobcats are skid steer, meaning that they do zero degree turns, meaning that they pivot on a point somewhere near the center of the wheelbase. So, this means that the load on the forks is way the fuck out in front of the pivot point, giving it a pretty high moment of inertia. Meaning that when my boss whipped the bobcat around 180 degrees, the stack of sips was flung off the forks with, with me along with it. We Yeah, we <laughs> The concrete driveway wasn't yet poured, so it was still number one and number two crushed stone. That, you know, the big two to three inch shit that's like trying to walk on a pile of baseballs under normal circumstances. I was falling from 12 feet, so I instantly rolled my ankle painfully and landed on hands and knees. Oh. But of course, there was also an entire stack of sips that were falling <laughs> on almost the exact same spot. Oh, no. I barely managed to frog jump out of the way on my bad <laughs> ankle in the split second of time before the sip could misery me. <laughs> <laughs> Quick time event. After the foreman ascertained that the sips weren't too badly damaged, <laughs> He told me not to go to the ER, and instead, like every good middle school PE teacher, told me to walk it off. <laughs> I, did <Christ>. go, <laughs> I did go to the clinic after work, though, got an x-ray, and luckily it was only badly sprained. And we secured the rest of the loads, uh, stacks of sips to the forks. The most dangerous ice cream sandwich. Yes. Keep up the good work. Good right. work. Yeah, that's yeah. us doing the good work. Thank you. 
Uh, uh, I'm constantly uh, learning danger. new ways structural materials can kill you. Mm. All right. All right. You, you convinced me. The next episode's on the Boston Molasses disaster. That's right. We you got him. Bitch. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Boston uh, Molasses flood. Oh, uh, tell them where to send in a safety third if they want right. to send in a safety That's third. That's a good point because we haven't been making that clear. If you want to send in a safety third, it is wtypod at gmail.com. Stop That's fucking d- DMing me them. That's <laughs> wtypod at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, you can buy a shirt from us too at a yes. Solidarity Superstore. Yes. Commercial, commercial time. Uh, do commercials. Kill James uh, Bond, 10,000 yes. Losses, Franklin, uh, Trash Future, uh, Guest. Alfred. Uh, where can they find you? Oh, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Alfred underscore 2TWU. Do you have any shows, podcasts, or anything that would interest the people, Alfred? High Ooh. speed rail maps? Yeah, I got one of those. <laughs> you may have seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that was an episode then. Yay. Hooray. It was an episode about a cube. <laughs>